Well, amen. Good evening. Good evening. Our God is faithful. Amen. He is faithful. I know I'm recharged already. Thank you for that. So we have walked through uh, actually all the way back starting last fall, believe it or not, uh, with a theology and a teaching on heaven, okay? And we have covered much ground. And, and most of it, right, because Scripture implores us to, to view heaven as our reality and as our hope, okay? And most of the time, it, it's such a large disconnect that, that we don't have that, we don't dream about that space very much. And so through a course of probably, let's say, 20 lessons, okay, we talked a lot about and we asked the question, what is it going to be like? And we explored and we played in a space remembering that much of reality as it's going to be is, is taking the very best of our current reality and, and playing in that space. So what is it going to be like to have uh, a perfectly healthy body? And we get a lot from that, right? No more sickness and no more death. What is it gonna be like to be in the new Jerusalem? What is that magnificent city going to be like where all the nations and all cultures meet in, in, in city life, in complexity, in art, and in music, and, and in poetry, and in all of those different forms? What is that gonna be like? What is it gonna be like when you have enough time to learn Mandarin? and speak with other cultures and, and to hear their heart language. And, and what is it gonna be like for you to, to build and to explore new hobbies and invent on into eternity? And what is it gonna be like to know that you can perfectly abide in the presence of the Lord wherever you are, that you will see things and understand things for what they are. You will keep them in their proper place. They will not become idols, but rather you will see the glory of God in all things. We talked and we went through these paths. We, what is it gonna be like at the marriage supper of the Lamb to behold your Lord and Savior face to face, to hear him say to you, well done, my good and faithful servant, you know, how we long for the affections of our, of our parents, of our mother and our father, and to have, to have our Lord and Savior say, well done. I long for that day. Now, in our trek through, we, we, I fleshed out a lot of this. I used Randy Alcorn's book, Heaven, as a, as a guide and, and did a lot of that. But on the final one with my short bit of time left, I also need to say that there, there is much that is congruent about what the new heaven and the new earth and your fixed body is going to look like and be like. There's much that is the same, but I would misrepresent uh, the Bible if, if we didn't also highlight there, there is much that is also going to be different from the perspective of things that we, well, we don't know. We don't know. So I'm gonna read some of the language out of, let's, let's take 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and, and let, let me share a couple verses with you. 1 Corinthians 15, if I start in verses 37 and 38, listen, it says, that what you sow is not the body that is to be. It's a bare kernel, perhaps of wheat or some other grain. But God gives it as a body that he has chosen. What is sown is perishable, verse 42. What is raised is going to be imperishable. 
What is sown in dishonor is going to be raised in glory. What is sown in weakness is raised in power. What is sown a natural body is going to be raised a spiritual body. Just as we have borne the image of Adam, of dust, so we shall bear the image of the Adam of heaven, Christ. I tell you this, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed for this perishable must put on the imperishable and this mortal must put on immortality. You say, pastor, what is that going to be like? I don't know. <laughs> because all I have ever known is the perishable. That's all any of us have ever known. Okay? So I want to close with this one illustration or verbiage from Scripture. Uh, that, that's the only way that I can show you the magnitude of the change that is going to take place, okay? And that is when you look at the cosmos, when you look at all of creation, this was a tough week, if I'm just honest, pastorally, with the number of people that have been sick and needed prayer and attention, there's, there's sickness, there's disease, there's our aging, ailing bodies, there are, when, when death hits young and unexpected, then you flip on the news and there's, there's constant turmoil of, of a divided culture, uncertainty of what's going to happen with the economy, and, and so much divisiveness now, that only exists in our culture, but, but around the world, there's war going on right now, and there's competing for resources and, and all of that. And then you take in, into account the natural order that there's earthquakes, and at times there's tornadoes that tear through, and, and God forbid those times that a tsunami just comes in and, and wipes out hundreds of thousands of people. And you say, why is it like that? Well, in one word, sin. Corporate and individual sin. And in the beginning, it was not that way. But because man sinned, all of creation fell too. Why did God make it that way? All of creation. All of creation. I mean, there's the second law of thermodynamics that says the entire universe is moving towards entropy. It is collapsing. It is dissolving. And everything moves towards decay. All things, everything, the entire universe. And Scripture tells us that all of creation is groaning. You know what it's waiting for? All of creation is groaning. Do you know what it's waiting for? The redemption of the children of God. This is a key point. 
and then I'm done. Romans 8, 21. I'm going to read it. The creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. Creation itself, Romans 8, 21. The creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. You know what is mind-blowing about this verse? You know how big the universe is, right? You're like, well, we don't even know, right? It's, it's incomprehensible how big it is. There, there are billions of galaxies, okay? It's incomprehensible how big it is. You say, why is the universe that big? Well, just to remind you that God's that big, okay? Like he spoke all of that into being. Okay, so think of the magnitude of how big the universe is, the billions of galaxies and the millions of billions of suns and, and trillions and trillions and trillions of planets. And who knows if there's other life out there and all sorts of crazy questions. Okay, everything has fallen because of mankind. And everything will be made new. That verse says that the universe, all of creation, is conditional waiting for the redemption of the children of God, right? The children of God or our uh, imperishable bodies are not dependent upon, oh yeah, and when everything gets fixed, you'll get fixed too. That's not the way the Bible says it. The way the Bible says it is when you get fixed, everything else gets fixed. So, when you dream in the space, we've played a lot in the, in the congruent space of what's going to be similar, but when your mind gets blown about what is it going to be like for this perishable to put on imperishable, the only illustration that I can give you to say, I don't know what it's going to be like, but it's going to be pretty big, is that the entire cosmos is waiting for that redemption. That's what it's going to be like. And that seems pretty big. It's overwhelming. Scripture speaks that way of us. Who is man that you're mindful of him? That our salvation, that us being fixed, made in God's image, all of creation is groaning and longing for the same day we are when our Lord and Savior returns. Amen? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Fix our eyes upon you. Lift our eyes to see the magnificence of who you are and our salvation in you. It is too wonderful for us to comprehend, and yet it is true. Yet it is true that all of creation groans for the day that Jesus returns, and it's dependent upon us. Who are we that you are mindful of us, that you would send your son, that you would enter into creation, the incarnation, that you would die in our stead, that you would resurrect so that you could save us from our own sin and death so that we could know you and walk with you. Who are we that we have been made in your image and yet we cry out, hallelujah, it is so, it is your truth. It is too wonderful for us to comprehend and yet when we are filled with this hope, everything changes. God, help us to walk with you, fix our eyes on you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you guys.